Hello and welcome to another Acrylic Coach tutorial on this Piano Visualizer on Touch Designer. Before we move on, I'd like to thank our Patreons and Derivative for their support. Please subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to support us into making more tutorials. And for more, you can check out our Patreon with different tiers to offer all Touch Designer files, online tools to create generative art, as well as personalized classes. I will leave the link in the description for anyone who is interested. Now back to today's tutorial. This is the MIDI keyboard I'm using, but any other MIDI keyboard you have will work for this tutorial. First thing to do is go to dialog window and open the MIDI device mapper. We'll create a new mapping and as an in device I'll select my MIDI keyboard. Now back to touch designer we'll get started with the data. Press tab and let's attach a MIDI in chop. Here if I start pressing on the keys of the MIDI board the notes will appear in our chop. So I'll go ahead and press every key once so that when I zoom in and press any of the keys it will have already been saved as a note right here. Great, now we want these samples to be organized as one single channel, so let's press tab and attach a shuffle chop. We'll open the parameter window and as operation method we'll select sequence all channels. If we zoom in we can recognize all 25 channels getting sequenced into one. And now every time we press a key on the MIDI board the note will appear like so. From here we're going to use this data to create an instancing network, then we'll transform the size of all the instances and later on we'll add a feedback loop. So let's do this. After the shuffle, I'll attach a rename chop and in the parameter window, I'll change the new name to size. And at the end of the network, I'll attach an all. Now that we have the base for the size of the instances, we want to transition in the X direction. So let's press tab and create a pattern chop, which will give us the X position of the instances. In the parameter window, set the type to ramp and as length, we'll type in op, then null one, which is the null holding the size, and then dot num samples, which is 25. Go to the channel tab and in here we'll set the channel name to TX. Attach a null at the end of the network and on the top network we'll attach a merge chop and have both nulls as inputs. After the merge let's attach another null chop and this we're going to use for the instancing. So let's go ahead and rename that to instance data. Now for the instancing itself let's create a circle and attach a transform after it so we can use it later on to change the scale. After the transform, attach a geometry and the camera. I'll go with a constant material, so we won't need any lights. Drag and drop the material to the geo node and select parameter material. After the geo, attach a render and a null right at the end. I'll turn on the display flag on the render top and have the render on another screen. Before the null, let's attach an RGB key to get the background to black. For now, let's go to the transform parameters and decrease the uniform scale. We'll come back to this later and we'll have to tweak it again once we have the 25 circles. Then, let's open the geoparameter window, go to the instance tab and toggle on the instancing. Let's drag the instance data null, drop it onto the default instance operator and set translate x as tx. So here we have our circles, but we want them to be apart from each other and somehow centered. Now the X position is on the pattern chop we added before. So if we go to the parameter window and set the offsets to minus 0.5, we can get the circles to be centered, but this will be affected every time we change the value of the amplitude in order to change the distance between the circles. So what we need is a relationship between these two parameters. To do this, we drag and drop the amplitude to the offset and select reference. We go into the expression, divide the whole thing by 2 and set it to negative. Now, no matter the amplitude value, the circles will always be centered. Now that we have the 25 circles, we can go back to the transform and decrease the value of the circles to around 0.04. Now back to the geo and in order to move the circles all the way to the bottom, we'll set the translate y value to minus 1.02. Great, now that we have all this, we want to be able to control the size of the circles with the keyboard. So we go back to the instance page and we'll set the scale on all three directions as size. Now as soon as we do this, everything will disappear because the size value here is at zero. But as soon as we press any of the keys on our MIDI keyboard, the dots will appear and then they will disappear again. But now this is working, we've managed to have the keys visualized and now it's time for some post-processing. I'll make some space here in the top network and after the render we'll attach a feedback first. After the feedback let's attach a transform and after the transform a composite. Connect the render as an input of the composite and the out to the RGB key. 
In the parameter window of the composite, we'll set the operation to add, and then we drag and drop it to the feedback, so we actually create a feedback loop. Now, if we press any of the keys, the circles will appear again, and this time they will stay for good. After the transform, I'll attach a level, in case I want to change the opacity level later on, but for now I'll bypass it. Now, to get the effect we saw in the beginning of the tutorial, I'll open the parameter window, and we notice that if we increase the translate Y value by just a little, this will create these little trails after the circles whenever a key is pressed. Pressed. And here, the intensity with which I press the keys also defines how intense these trails will be. So if I briefly and gently press a key, the trail will be small. And if I press hard and long, then the trail will appear more intensely. I'll set the value of a translate Y for now to 0.01. Now, I want the circles to look more like actual trails, so let's attach a blur top after the transform. And in the parameter window, we'll increase the filter size to 9. Then, I'm going to get a feedback edge from the image filters in the palette and connect it between the comp and the RGB key. In the parameter window, I'll change the edge color to something I like, and this will give me this rocket-like effect to the trails. And this was it for the tutorial. This is the basic setup. From here, you could go on changing the parameters, adding new operators, or you could also try this out with 3D objects instead of the circles. The important operator here is the shuffle, which is creating the main trick. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something new. Let me know in the comments if you tried this out or if you have any questions, and I'll see you very soon with a new tutorial. Until then, have a great time. Bye!